Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys? Here's my other hand. I'm wrapped up in ice so I can be nice and a good girl because I go to the doctor tomorrow. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Sorry, I was so last minute putting everything up. I thought I had everything ready to go and um, obviously I did not. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> so I have in front of you my annual catalog it showed up today yay me all of you who are my regular normal customers <clears throat> you guys have a catalog coming to you as well I'm not sure when they're sending the customer ones that we paid to have sent out but hopefully soon you guys will be getting those How are you, Rita? Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, guys. Um, while you're watching, you can do that. You can hit the thumbs up. I always forget to do it when I'm watching. And then I have to run back and do it. <laughs> so I got my catalog. Did you get yours yet, Rita? I wish I could open it for you guys, but I can't. So today we're going to talk about organization and how you go about taking care of the things that come up when you have a big color refresh like this. As a demonstrator, it's a pretty big deal because um, you have all these colors, you have all these colors going out, you have all these ink pads and blends and cardstock, you have dyes, you have stamp sets, everything happens at the same time. And it can be overwhelming if you allow it to be. So what I have done since, of you, as you guys can see, <laughs> with my surgery, I haven't been able to stamp and I'm like dying to stamp for you guys, but I'm, I've yet to get the okay to stamp. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. And hopefully he's going to give me the okay to stamp. So I've been getting all my color stuff ready. And I'm going to start with showing you what I keep on my desk every day, all the time. Um, it is like my little Bible of paper. <laughs> Okay, so it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to raise the camera a little bit and see if I can just get that a little higher and not get too far out of camera, out of, uh, let's see. Sorry for the moving of everything. I'm going to move this down a little in this direction. All right, that looks good. Thanks, Rita, so much. I appreciate it. So this sits on my desk, and let me explain to you what happened. I used to um, craft, and I had an L-shaped desk, and in the desk it had a drawer that had availability to have hanging files. Hey, John, thanks for joining. Well, in this ability to have the hanging files, I had all of my cardstock, and I just had it in regular old manila envelope, um, not envelopes in manila folders and so whenever I needed a piece of cardstock in a particular color I would just open that drawer and pull out that color well when I redid my stamping area I got a completely different desk and a different style of desk and so what I decided um, to do was to get a piece of glass and to lay it on these two sets of drawers from Ikea called Alex drawers because I really wanted um, those Alex drawers for the organization that they provide. Well, in doing so, I lost my, um, whatever you want to call it, my, my drawer with cardstock. So I had to come up with a different way. Sorry, guys, I'm moving the camera around. I'm just trying to get it in camera better. 
So I had to find a way to keep all my cardstock at my fingertips because my drawers do not have hanging files in them. So all of my cardstock is in a large um, filing cabinet that I got when my husband's company. Hi, Amy. Thanks for joining us. So my, when my husband's company that he worked for um, closed that uh, building that they were in and they moved to a different state, they were getting rid of a whole bunch of stuff. So I acquired a big filing cabinet from Human Resources. And so I have all my cardstock in there. And I'm going to have some pictures tomorrow. I'm going to put up some blog posts. I'm going to have links to all of the stuff that I use in case it's something that will work for you. And you guys will be able to order it and get it as well. Hey, I. Hey, Lee. So this is a container. It's one of those clear plastic containers. Now I looked for this particular container. I've had it for years and it's no longer available, but I found one that is comparable that'll work for you guys if you want this system. So I'm gonna show you what this system actually is. So what this is, is all of my cardstock. I cut two sheets of cardstock in quarters. So four and a quarter by five and a half in the US. And then I cut two sheets of cardstock in half. One sheet is cut hamburger and one sheet is cut hot dog. And I don't know if you know what that means, but let me grab a sheet of cardstock and I will show you. So a piece of hamburger cut cardstock would be this piece here. Oh, this one's roughed up. Cut in this direction so that you have two long skinny pieces and a piece cut hamburger would be cut the other way where you have two wider pieces so i cut one sheet like this in this direction so i have two wide pieces and one sheet in this direction so i have two skinny pieces and then i score them and fold them in half and so what you get <clears throat> i'm going to show you Here's my blueberry bushel. This is one of the new colors. Is you get two cards in this direction. Here they are. Okay. And I just put them, stack them one on top of each other. And then two cards that open in this direction. So that when I'm designing, I don't even have to cut my bases. So the back section of this container holds my half sheets that are folded and scored, okay? And the front section, let me show you my uh, Mossy Meadow, has eight quarter sheets. Now I can use these quarter sheets for a layer that I just have to trim down slightly, or I can use these quarter sheets for something to stamp on, but there's eight of them. And as I run low, as I use them up, when I pull, like if I pull and I only have one left or two left, let's say I these are gone and I go to take one of these and I realize I only have one left, I'll grab two sheets and I'll quickly cut it into quarters and I stick it in here. So the hard work is just doing it the first time. But once you have it done, keeping up with it is fairly easy because as you use your colors, you'll realize, oh, I need another sheet of this particular color and then you're able to grab it. So these have been organized and I don't do rainbow order because I need to know what's in each color family. So I do it by color family and I just go in the order that it's in the catalog. So I have my neutrals in the front, then I have my brights, subtles, regals, and then the in colors are behind those. And so here's our newest in colors. They start here. And so I have um, just regular labels and this sheet of white cardstock that I use as dividers. So I just cut this a little bigger so it sticks up past my cardstock, as you can see here. And then I just put a label with the name in the corner. And then I have all these quarter sheets of cardstock. Hey, Mima. 
And this is how I organize myself so that it makes it really easy for me design, to design. I don't have to get up. I don't have to go to the filing cabinet and grab cardstock. I have all the cardstock that I need for the most part. I even have behind all my end colors, I'm trying to get to it, Whisper White. Now my white pieces that are quarter sheets, those are not the thick. They're just the regular Whisper White, not Whisper White, I'm sorry, I'm calling it the old name, Basic White. Same with the vanilla. But my pieces that are in the back here that are the card bases are the thick because I like to use my bases to use the thick basic white and the thick um, very vanilla and then my, behind that I have my black cardstock in the same way so here's my quarter sheets of black and back here are my quarter sheets of black so in the very back you know I go and get my whites and vanillas and blacks and then in the front, I have them by name, so I can just flip till I find that name. But it's really pretty on the side. Look how pretty that is when you see all the colors in this cool container. Like I said, it's a lot of work originally to make it, to put it together. But once you've done the initial work of making all your labels, the next thing is just to keep up with it. When you go to grab a paper out of there, if it's close to being finished, you just cut a few more and stick them in there. So keeping up with it is very, very easy. Now with the new color refresh, it was a little bit time consuming. I had to cut more cardstock pieces and I had to cut, you know, make more labels and then of course cut the new colors to fit into my container, but it's all updated now and ready to go. And on my blog post tomorrow, I will have a comparable container to hold all of your paper since this one is no longer available. Anybody have any questions about this before I move on to a different organizational tool? And if you're watching on a replay, feel free to leave me comments and let me know if you have any questions and I'll try and answer them as best I can. If you don't have any questions, guys, give me a thumbs up so I know that we're good to move on to the next topic. Okay, we'll move on. All right, let's go on to the next topic. Let me show you how I keep my cardstock in that big filing cabinet. So I can't move you over to the filing cabinet because the way I have you guys set up, but I'll bring my filing cabinet file to you. <clears throat> so let me grab a couple of these so that you can see them in action. All right. So here are my files. Hey Lou, thanks for joining us. I didn't see that you were here. I must have missed you saying hi. Okay, so in my filing cabinet, I have these hanging file folders. You know how they're in a filing cabinet. And I have this little, I don't know what they're called. Let me see, I have the, these are from Office Depot and they're um, one fifth tabs and they're plastic. You can buy them in a 25 count. They're the two inch size, that works for me. And so I use these little slots in here and I pull these out. You know, I, I cut a half sheet by two inch piece 
of the colored cardstock, and then I write the name by hand. Now, you could always use labels, but I like using my handwriting because I can see the color, and that shows me what's inside. So the Mossy Meadow, I'll know it's going to be this color. So once I've cut it down to two inch by half inch, I write with a, with my stamp and write marker, my black stamp and write marker. I'll write the name and then I insert it here into this little clear plastic tab. Now when you buy a box of hanging files, they do come with these, but I use so many of them that I ended up needing extra. So that's why I bought a pack of them. And then what you do, what you do here is you just slip these into this holder like so, and then that tells me that everything that's in this hanging file is Mossy Meadow. Now let me show you what I keep in my hanging files. So in my hanging files, I have a pack of designer series, not designer series paper, of cardstock that's opened. So this is my open pack and I can easily grab a couple sheets and cut them and put them into that other filing piece because they're not in the plastic wrap that they come covered in. Then I have a manila folder. I'm going to flip this. And in this manila folder, I keep scraps of all sizes. Yes, I keep even little skinny pieces. This makes actually really cool paper. Here's some half inch pieces because you guys know we have tons of half inch pieces when we cut our cardstock, right? And down to our um, layers. And so these just go in a manila folder and then I use the same process. I cut a piece of the of the um, cardstock and I write the name on it and I glue it onto this piece and I use my multi-purpose glue because it bonds really well to the manila folder. And then that's next. And then the last thing is my backup pack. So this is a pack that's not opened. I leave it sealed until I run out of my loose sheets that are in the front. And when I run out of my loose sheets, I open this pack and bring it to the front. And then I write this. I have a list that I keep on my filing cabinet. I'll show you guys. It's just a clipboard. And when I need a pack of cardstock, I just write it down. I put CS and I just keep a running list. And when I order what I need, I just cross it off. And then that way, next time I place my order, I know what card stocks I need to get. And it's no rush to run out and go get one of these because I just opened a full pack. Now, when I first started as a brand new demonstrator, it took time to get all my backup card stock. I started with just one pack of each, a little at a time. And then before I knew it, I was needing to add something to an order and I just toss on a pack of cardstock until now I have my duplicate packs. Okay, so here is another one. And the reason I wanted to show you this one is Misty Moonlight is kind of a dark color. And so I have used a white pen to write on it because if you use a dark pen, then you can't see the name. And then you just have to go by knowing what that color is. So I wanted to point that out. That's why I pulled this one out. But as you can see, I also have it in the same format. I have the name, the loose cardstock in the front, my scraps in the middle, and an unopened pack in the back. And luckily for me, I never got rid of my Misty Moonlight cardstock when it retired as an in color. So I never had to buy any of this when the new colors changed and Misty Moonlight became a new neutral. Does anybody have any questions about how I keep my cardstock in these folders? I'll have a picture in the blog post so that you can see what they all look like, all nice and neat. Hey, Maleda, thanks for joining us. Yeah, so I'll have a picture in the blog of all of 
my file folders all in a row were a, sh a, a picture of all of that so that you guys can see it. If you don't have any questions, if you guys can give me a thumbs up, that'll help me know that I can move on to my next topic. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on. If anybody has a question, just type it in there and I'll come back to it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about <clears throat> are my um, six by six designer series paper. Now, I have not obviously moved in any new paper because all we've been able to do is pre-order. So in the pre-order, there was only one pack of six by six designer series paper that I purchased. So I'm gonna show you my paper prior to me filling it up with new stuff. So this is gonna have retired stuff, old stuff. That's just a caveat for you. So I have this other container. And so I keep my six by six in this container like this. And I use these folders that I have purchased and I will link to these folders in my organizational um, blog post that you guys will be able to read tomorrow where you could get these folders, okay? So all my six by six is in this container and the ones that have scraps, like you can see, I've used a lot of this tea boutique paper. So I'm gonna try and pull it out. When I open my cardstock, I open it at the top. So I usually like, or even my DSP, I just slice it across the top. And then I just pull the, the plastic back and I look through my paper to figure out what I want to use. When I'm done and cut it, cut up pieces, I place them in the front of the packs so that I can look at those first before I cut up a new piece. And I just keep those right in the front. Now, I have not put dividers on these, but it is something that you could very easily do. Then I take them, because this is kind of flimsy, the paper that it comes in, and I put it in this harder plastic, because this plastic stands up the, to the test of touching it over and over, and it won't rip my plastic. So I'm gonna link to these plastic pieces that I put my six by six paper in. As you can see here, here's another one. And this one has a ton. This is the Butterfly DSP. And I have used almost all of it. I only have a few whole sheets left. And the rest is just scraps. I've cut butterflies out of it. I love this paper. I'm so sad it's going away. <laughs> I actually did buy another pack of it. I thought it was in here, but oh yeah, here it is in the back. Before it retired, I bought another one because I was almost out and I was like sad about it. And I'm really glad I did because that paper is retiring. Okay, so I also like to buy the in-color papers. And what I mean by that is that you can buy these packs of six by six paper packs in all of our color families and both in colors. Now, when you buy these, these are not that plastic that's really thin. This is a harder plastic, and it has a sticky on it. So it actually sticks for you to open it. So I leave them in this, and I don't feel a need to slide them into those plastic holders. And the same thing with this. I keep my full sheets in the back, and I keep my 
um, smaller cut pieces in the front. And then when I'm done with this, I just put that little, I seal that in the front and these get slid in and I've had them in, these are the in colors that are going away. You can see I've used a lot of those. Subtles, brights, here's the current in colors that are not going away, neutrals. So they come in all the different ones. And in my big haul video, I showed you guys um, the new packs of those. I'm gonna grab them in case you missed that video. So this is the new patterns. Oh my. My, my Velcro just doesn't like being stuck to my hand. It always wants to come undone. So here's the new packs. This is the prints that these come in. So I'll have to move them over to this section when I get a moment. But these also come in that nice protective. And there's, um, you get two sheets of each one. So really one of every pattern per color. So here is the basic gray. And so you get two of this pattern, two of this pattern, which is the same as two of each of these. So really you get one of every sheet. So these are the four prints that they come in this year, which I think they're super cute. I'm really excited about them. And every year they change the prints. So if you buy them every year, you guys will have the cutest prints to use in the in colors or in the color families. I have tons of them. I have some from back in the day when they were brand new before when Stampin' Up! first started trying to do them. Here, I'll show you one of them. <laughs> and they came in these pack in these packs that were attached at the top. And you had to like pull them out of these books. And you only got a few colors. You didn't get every color in that color family. See how old these are? So I still have those. So I keep those in these little holders in the back over here. But this is like, we don't have that much six by six paper, but this is how I keep my six by six. Anybody have any questions? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready for me to move on from the six by six paper. We can talk about our DSP next. So the 12 by 12 designer series paper I keep it <clears throat> in these kinds of plastic holders, and I will link to these as well in my blog. Okay, so when you purchase these they hold quite a few packs so these are from the mini catalog i haven't purged these yet you can see how much i love this one i have two <laughs> but so these are mini paper packs that were in 12 by 12 and i keep them in these little plastic holders they're hard to show but they have a little slit a uh, lower front let me see if I can there the front is shorter and then they go up like this to protect the paper so I keep them in these and I have them by type so I keep all the mini catalog stuff separate than my annual catalog and separate than my specialty papers so like here's my foils, 
So here's all the foil, silver foil sheets. And now these come with these, um, you get only a couple sheets, but they come with this weak paper. They are skinny, Lee, but you don't need very many if you're keeping them by type. So if you're keeping them like by mini and then annual catalog, you just need a few of them. I do have a bigger one for the annual catalog. I'll show you in a second, but this is for the DSPs that come out of the mini. I don't buy every single one, so those work really well. But they're not a magazine holder because they would not hold 12 by 12. Magazines are as tall as 11, and they're only eight and a half in the front, so you would not be able to use a magazine holder to put them in. So this is the foil sheets, and because they have that flimsy plastic, my friend Lou, <laughs> who's on here, she gave me these plastic that are a thicker plastic and they're sleeves. And I will link to those for you guys in the description of my blog post tomorrow um, so that you guys can check it out as well. So I will put a link in here into the YouTube for my blog post. If you're not a member or if you don't subscribe to my blog alerts, if you go to my blog, which is Inky, I-N-K-Y, hands, plural, warmheartsplural.com, I-N-K-Y-H-A-N-D-S-W-A-R-M-H-E-A-R-T-S.com. If you go there on the right-hand side on the computer or all the way at the bottom on the mobile, if you scroll to the bottom of the first page, you can sign up for an alert, and every time I post a blog post, you'll get an email. And if you click in the email, it'll take you right to that blog post. Okay, so this is how I keep my foils, and then this is my specialty paper. So this is like pearlescent papers, linen papers, specialty vellums are in here. I'm trying to find you a vellum. See, here's the specialty vellums. So I keep specialty paper, foils, and mini catalog in these thin, this is about how thin they are, but they still hold quite a bit of paper. And I will link to those. And now let me show you my annual catalog. I have a lot more paper from the annual catalog, of course, because there's a lot more paper to be had in there. All right, let me grab those. All right, now this is a wider holder. <laughs> I can't go much higher <laughs> with the camera. I'm gonna angle it like this. So this one holds more paper. This is how I keep my annual. And it does have tabs that you can purchase that fit inside of it, it's a separate purchase, and you can label the name of your paper so that you can find it. I don't usually label it, I just flip through until I see a color and I'm like, oh there, that's my paper. Here's the one from Celebration, I still haven't purged it because it's so amazing. So this is how I keep my annual catalog. You can see how much thicker this one is. And I'll link to this as well. I use the Calyx units. You're welcome, Rita, no problem. So I use the Calyx from Ikea, which is what I have all of my supplies in. The Calyx unit is pretty cool. It's a square that's divided into smaller squares. If you guys are not familiar with it, it's fantastic. I'm gonna bring up Ikea on my phone and I'm gonna show you guys, let me bring it down. So when you buy your Calyx unit, 
They come in different sizes. So this one's a four by two, a four by four, um, a two by two. The one I have is this one. Oh no, that's the four by four. I have the five by five, here's mine. So I have this big unit like this. Sorry, I brought it out of the camera. And so this is where I store all my stuff in this big, huge organizer. So in the bottom shelves is where I have my paper. Those units slide perfectly into this unit. You just slide them right in there. And because my paper is the heaviest, I keep them on the bottom. Then in this row here, I have a big um, bin that's like a fabric bin that fills the whole hole. And in there, I just keep a bunch of big stuff. In this third row, the middle one, I have drawers. And the drawers are two drawers and they slide in and out on rollers. Here, I'll show you the one I have that has my ribbon in it. So this is the drawer and it's a drawer front and it rolls in and out and there's another one on top of it so two drawers and they fit in this unit and down the middle I have a set of two drawers in every one of those the ones above that I have for stamps and my um, punches and then the one up on the very top I have a glass shelf in the middle of each one of those and I have two bins and each bin holds a different item. So that's how I keep all of my stamping stuff organized. So the calyx is a really great way because especially for paper, you can keep all of that stuff. So if you're interested in the calyx, you need to find an Ikea. They're pretty awesome, these units. All right, let's go on to dye storage. Are you guys good with DSP? Does anybody have any questions or did I miss any questions? All right, I'm gonna move on to my dies. Okay, <laughs> so another clear bin. You can see it has a, a handle. And I have these folders, and then my folders are, I've already purged all my retiring dies out of it. These are just the ones that are active as of the new catalog. And so these are dividers, and I can link to these as well if you guys are interested. And I got them from Amazon. And then I have my dies behind there, and I put my dies on magnet sheets. And I'll have some videos this week on how I go about organizing this and the process of actually putting them on magnets, how I put my stamp sets, how to put stamp sets together, how if you have old stamp sets and you want to use those new cling stickers, how to use those. I'm going to have all organizational videos this week on YouTube, so you'll be able to catch those as we go. But I keep mine magnetic. To me, it's the best way to go, especially for things like this, because we don't want to be pulling all these skinny alphabet dies off of tape. So this is a big alphabet set. You can see how large it is. And if I had this stuck on tape, every time I tried to take it on and off of tape, it would take forever. Having it magnetized, it's so fantastic. Just fits right on there, sticks to it, doesn't fall off when you shake it. It's the best. So I'm always buying magnets and I'll link to the magnets on the video as well where I buy those but this is how I keep my dies and here's a wider one <clears throat> some are thin and skinny 
and then some are those wider ones. This one, see, I haven't even put these away yet. I have to magnetize this. This is probably the one I'll do the video on because I haven't put it on a magnet sheet yet. Here's a larger one. The beauty of having it, like I said, is you can see. You have the name on here, but you can see what die it is. So when you go to die cut, I know some people keep them in with their stamps. But for me, let's say, let me find a good set to talk about. Let me see. Okay, let's talk about this one, for instance. Let me pull the stamp set that that goes with. Give me one second. All right. This is a really good example. Let's say you bought this as a bundle. I'm going to bring my camera down a little bit, guys, so I can see that I'm in camera here with you guys. Let's say I bought this die and stamp set as a bundle, and I decided that I was going to go ahead and put this on magnets and keep it in here with my stamps so that it was all in one place. Now I'm going to stamp and I'm stamping words from a completely different stamp set. And I'm looking for a label to put them on because I don't want to just cut it out of a rectangle of piece of, of cardstock. Well, if that die set is in here, I can't see those dies. I have no idea that this fantastic die set has this rectangle, this decorative rectangle, a circle, an arrow, banners that are curved and straight and an oval. I would never know that. I would never see it. I would never use it. And I wouldn't get as much use out of my dies. If my dies are left in their holder on magnets where I can see everything, when I am flipping through my dies quickly to see what I want to use to cut something out with, even if I don't know the name of this, as soon as I open and see this, I'm like, ooh, that's a possibility. If it's hidden in this stamp set, I'm not going to remember that it's in there. So I get a lot of use out of my dies by being able to visually flip through them. Sometimes I flip and I'm like, ooh, let me add a border to a card. If I don't see my borders, I'll never do it. So I really love having my dies in this manner because for me, when I see them, like for instance, the Give It A Whirl dies, they're standalone, but look at how many other things are included in these dies. You have hearts, this size, this size, this size. You have three different clouds. You have all these little stars on the back here. A cool scallop, a cool banner. This cuts out a heart, this cuts out a circle. You wouldn't even know that you had that available if you didn't have them exposed where you could see them. And then this is something else I do. If I cut too many of something, I'll put it in a small baggie, like here's some extra clouds, extra circles. And I just put it in here with my dies, usually on the back side where the words are, where the name of the die set is. I'll just stick the baggie in there. And then when I go to pull it out, if I have them already die cut, I don't have to think about it and I just use them. So this to me, for me, this is what works. It may not work for you, but I love having my dies available for me to just flip through like this. Now I do have to tell you that all my shapes dies, you guys that follow me and watch my videos know how much I love shapes. All my shapes dies, these are retired. That's what the little red dot means. All my shapes are back here. even the old school ones from back in the day. I use shapes so much, I have to have them at my fingertips at all times. So they live in with my regular active dies. Does anybody have any questions about dies?
Guys got quiet on me. Is anybody still here? <laughs> I'll wait on you. Let me know that you're ready for me to move on and we'll move on. Let's talk about embossing folders. I have a container for my embossing folders. Now it's super old. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find you guys one like this. Let me raise up a tiny bit more. Okay. So this has a hinged lid, okay, and here's all my folders, okay, and they're labeled alphabetically in handwriting, but you could very easily use a labeler and put the names of them on here. So the this is an old retired one called Argyle, and it's sitting back here in this section. But let me show you what really is the best part of embossing folders is actually embossing them. Because until you emboss them, you don't know what they're gonna look like on your project. But if you've embossed them, onto a piece of paper. Now these are just old color swatches and you can get them from Home Depot. Sometimes they're changing out an entire display because Benjamin, because their brand or Benjamin Moore is changing out an entire display of colors. You can get them from them and then you can use these or you can just use cardstock. And so I have them embossed so that I know what I want to use, what the name of it is, and then it's alphabetical to find it. So once I know what I want to use, these are all my borders. I have a bunch of border ones. Here's a smaller set of embossing folders that I have. And like I said, once you see them embossed, then you know if you want to use them. Now for all my full size ones, they're on these big pieces. So that you can see what they look like. And then if I know, okay, I want that one, it's called Big Dots. So then I scroll over here, big dots, and there it is. If it's called brocade, I pull that one out. If it's called fancy fan, I just look for it alphabetically, and they're all listed alphabetically, just like that. Anybody have any questions about my embossing folders? Now really, you can keep them in any size bin that you want, whatever works for how many folders you have. I have a lot, and I have a lot from my scrapbooking days before I was even involved with Stampin' Up. So I have to have a large holder for mine. But what you need to do is figure out how many you have, measure how wide that is, how tall it is, and get you a bin that fits that size and then you can start labeling them organizing them and you'll be good to go don't forget to give me a thumbs up guys 
click that thumbs up at the bottom of your window. I think it only uh, shows that I only have three of those right now. Thanks, John. All right, I guess that's it, guys. Anybody have any questions for anything else that I may not have talked about? that you want to know how I organize it. Thanks, John. Thank you, Rita. If you guys think of anything else that you need help with organizing, let me know and I'll be happy to show you. I am going to have pictures of my Stampin' Blends and my ink pads, um, my cardstock, my punches. All of those things are going to be included in the post. <laughs> Eileen, you're so silly. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. All right, guys, don't forget to give me the thumbs up, and I appreciate it so much for you guys that were here tonight. Um, if you missed a portion or Lou, like yours kept cutting in and out, you can always watch it on the replay. It should be available as soon as I end this live stream. It should be available for you guys to watch on replay. You can fast forward to the sections that you might have missed, and I appreciate you guys being here. Does anybody have any other questions? If not, I'm going to let you go. And for my customers, know that your catalog should be coming soon. I can't wait until you get it and you can look inside and see all the really great things that are in there. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank you, Lou. All right, guys, I guess that's it. Don't forget to sign up and check your Paper Pumpkin subscriptions. Today is the first day of the new Paper Pumpkin subscription. Sometime tonight, I will update my website so that you guys can see what the next kit looks like. And if you have not joined my um, Kelly's VIP group in Facebook, feel free to do so, and I will approve you. Go ahead and go in there. Just look for it. It's called, um, in I think it's called Kelly's VIP Inky Hands Warm Hearts. If you Google for it in Facebook under groups, you shouldn't have any problem finding it. It's a public group, and then I can add you to the group. Thanks for being here, guys. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping! <laughs>